approaching the ICO the right way. Ioana Frinchu, the COO at Crowd Mentor. Previously, she was the consultant at IBM within the business analytics and optimization division, and an analytics and machine learning engineer within Parametric Technology Corporation. Please give a warm round for Ioana Frinchu. It is a pleasure to, uh, to be here today, to have the opportunity to talk a bit about an eagle-eye view of how to approach an ICO. I've been doing this for the past two years, and I've seen a lot of things changing in the ICO space. And I would like to start with one question. Uh, from all of you here, who has invested in the Ethereum ICO? Just raise your hand. Okay, so we have four people in the crowd. Um, that was actually the very first ICO that, um, that took place and had a huge impact. Back then, people were waiting for about a year to get their Ethereum tokens. There were no contribution dashboards, um, not so much trading, and I think the whole market cap was uh, under 10 billion. Things have changed a lot, and uh, right now we are moving towards a much more regulated space where we better understand what these uh, decentralized companies are, what distributed applications are, and um, trading and building this kind of products has become quite mainstream. In the past years, I've had the opportunity to work with uh, wonderful business people and technology people, building the largest crypto exchange in Singapore, as well as um, creating the um, ICO listing uh, hub for the Gibraltar blockchain exchange. I've been doing also my own solutions on um, delegated proof-of-stake blockchains and build solutions for UNDP, Group Société Générale, Transavia, and many other companies in order to streamline their business and offer digital solutions in the blockchain space. After working with this kind of people and having the opportunity to uh, evolve by uh, offering them solutions to different issues that they faced, um, I also gained a lot of experience with ICOs. And uh, being a bit of a purist, I would like to start with um, what's an act ICO actually. According to NASDAQ, an ICO is a fundraising mechanism in which new projects sell their underlying tokens in exchange for Bitcoin and Ether. The way we do it depends from one project to another. Sometimes we just take in the contribution and um, split the tokens. Other times we um, wait until the end of the ICO to distribute them. But no matter what, we try to make the investors feel happy, give them the opportunity to use the tokens that we are creating, and we are trying to make a good use case of the technology. Looking back at the last year, in 2017, we have had three legendary ICOs taking place, and they have definitely started to deliver meaningful work. This would be Filecoin, EOS, and Bancor. Of course, the numbers for EOS are much higher now, but I didn't get the chance to, to update everything. Um, they have had different approaches to things, and um, the most common thing between the three of them is the fact that they created tokens that can be instantly used until their product was delivered. This gave them the advantage of having a product that can be used, a community that can be formed around it, and a um, um, team of developers that can continue delivering the vision. And now comes the question, do we want to create ICOs, do we not? Do we need them or do we not need them? And every time a client comes to me and tells me, I want to do an ICO, I'm like, okay, great, let's do it. It sounds like an easy project, and trust me, the ICO is the easiest part. Um, but we have to ask ourselves three questions. Is our project changing the world in one way or another? Are we bringing a difference by doing this? Are we building, for example, a new country, a new territory? Are we trying to fix a real issue that we are facing in our community, country, or region? Do, uh, does our project really make a good case of distributed ledger technology? When it comes, for example, um, given also the, um, the subject of this event, when it comes to public administration, let's say, blockchain can actually make a difference 
and we can use it in all sorts of use cases, from signing documents to tracking expenses, uh, working on governmental transparency. We can do a lot of stuff. Digital identity. And then we have to ask ourselves, do we definitely need an ICO? This question comes because we are creating a token, right? We are selling something, or we are getting contributions in exchange of something. And um, creating a token means that this has to have a use case. And that gets us back to the second question. So whether you are doing an ICO right now, plan to do one, or already did one, you should still ask yourselves these questions and try to have a good answer for each of them. And of course, if you already have the funding and you do not need to do an ICO, then just fund your project and then you can do an ICO afterwards. I've seen this kind of approach and it can also be successful. After we decide to start an ICO, of course, we need to take in consideration the timeline and the way that we deliver it. We have to have a good concept, a good use case. And starting from there, we can build a product, we can define it, and we can decide whether we want to start the ICO with a white paper and a vision, or if we want to have a product, a good concept that's already having its alpha or beta version, and build from there. These are the main two options. Both of them are valid as long as you actually respect um, the promised vision in the white paper. After all this fun stuff comes the post-ICO development. That will most likely take one year, two years, even five years to finish. And it's important to have a good and dedicated team and to meet all the components needed for your project to succeed. When I thought about how should I get the eagle eye view on how an ICO looks, I identified four main components. One would be the team. The other one, the marketing, the, the PR, the product development, and the business development. You have to have a very, very strong and focused team on all these areas. And for this, you need to understand what the structure of your company should look like. Most likely, when we think about your team, we look at the co-founders who need to be dedicated, who need to understand each other and to act like a single organism. That's very important. At the advisors, and I chose to represent them as some uh, wise elderly people because they already have the experience, whether it is in the decentralized space or in the um, domain that you are trying to approach. So if you're going into finance, try to get some people from the traditional financing field as your advisors. This will actually help you look a bit more determined and to actually understand what they are confronting themselves with. And of course, the providers. Your providers are the people that give you one-time services or people that you do not need on a full-time full, um, full -time basis. And they also need to be dedicated, serious people that can understand your vision, your product, and what you need from them. Whether it's your PR agency, your software development company, your graphic designer, all of them need to have the same set of information in order to deliver something that is coherent. When it comes to the marketing side, um, there are four main areas that you should focus on, which would be social media, ICO listing websites, community management, and ICO roadshow. The one that will help you most on the long run will be community management. And when it comes to this, there's a very important aspect to take into consideration, and that would be think global and act local. You'll have a lot of people who are interested in your project, but maybe they don't speak English, or maybe they don't get the chance to meet you. Get good community managers that can actually help you deliver the message and can build a community around them because this is like your family. They will be the first um, evangelists that will talk about your project. And they need to understand it, like it, and uh, deliver the information that you wish to be delivered. The business development area comes with um, a bit of a different kind of challenge. When we talk about a company, we have to make sure that we incorporate in the right country because the legislative system differs from one place to the other and we want something that is stable. Uh, we want a country where the law does not change every six months. And also we want a crypto-friendly country because there have been a lot of countries that have expressed interest in uh, becoming more crypto-friendly, but there's also a list of countries that is not as crypto-friendly as we wish. 
and we need to make a very, very thorough and thoughtful decision. We also need to take care of the legal part, and uh, this is where you need to have a very good um, set of lawyers to sign all the SAFTs, sign uh, corporate partnerships and stick to them, to not overpromise and to not underachieve everything that you need to have in order to grow into good partnerships. And you also need a person that takes care of your investor relationship with great attention. Because the people who are putting money into your project are the first believers. And they need to actually see the results. You need to deliver. No, we take the money and then we give something back. And apart from the idea and the vision, we also need to deliver products. And delivery is a feature. The product development area, that's where I'm most um, uh, involved in, is um, not necessarily the most complicated one, but one that needs great attention. And here you have to follow another timeline that can actually uh, be successful for your company. You need to start with a white paper where you express the technology, the token lifecycle, the token design, and the whole concept. You have to iterate and reiterate on that. Getting a good professional writer is not everything. You need to talk with the people that will actually build the product and understand what's possible and what's not. I have seen a lot of uh, ICOs that promised um, uh, some uh, products that were not even technologically possible and they raised millions and millions. So please talk with the people who are actually implementing this before you just put everything up in, uh, in plain sight. That's very important. Otherwise, they will say, we cannot do it. And then conflicts will appear, and you'll not be able to evolve as fast as possible. Investors will get upset. They want their money back. And here we see the whole butterfly effect that can happen. And you don't want that, because you want to build a real company and a real product. When it comes to contribution and actually raising that money that your investors um, have, try to adapt to the market. Whether the market is dipping or increasing, you have to adapt to the situation. And you have to remember that the people who are investing may have mined crypto, bought it at a smaller price, may have used all their, um, all their money a few years ago to buy crypto, and they really believe in things. They invest in ICOs that they really care about. So try to adapt to them and understand their needs. You need to have a user verification mechanism as well, because you do not want terrorist money or drug uh, dealing money in your company. Also, your user verification mechanism must be compliant with the country that you are incorporated in. If um, you just uh, let people contribute and see what happens afterwards, you might have the very, very not so pleasant surprise that you might not be able to put your money in a bank. And this has happened to other ICOs. So please try to have a good verification mechanism. And you also need to have some auditors. Have your token, your dashboard, or your software audited. You don't want to have your applications hacked. You don't want to have the wallet keys on your server just <laughs> disappearing together with all your money. It's very important to do auditing and be completely thorough when it comes to your token and your platform. And the most fun part, the post-ICO development. Actually, as on the previous slide, this is a slide, uh, a picture from one of the products that we've built from the biggest exchange in Singapore. In the post-ICO part, you need to follow your timeline and keep promoting your product. Just because you raised a lot of money doesn't mean that you don't have to go to roadshows and uh, conferences anymore. The fun just begins. It's important for you to actually stick to your promises Continue promoting your product, acquire users, um, build the whole system around it, and have the, um, the utility of the token actually being a utility, not just on paper. Also, please try to not hide that your security token is a security token. If it's a security, it's a security, and if it's a utility, it's a utility. If it quacks like a duck, floats like a duck, and looks like a duck, it's a duck. Also, please do not make changes unless you have valid reasons. Changes are always welcome, but you have to inform your investors, your community, and the people who believe in you. If you try to make changes without informing your community, trust me, you'll be on fire. 
people will start yelling that you're scammers, that you did not do what you promised, and everything will crash. So please try to keep everyone informed. Communication is key when it comes to post-ICO development. And um, given what we, has happened in the past uh, year and months in the ICO space, I believe that we'll continue to see really interesting projects coming up. Um, and the way that 2018 is evolving right now is by having already existing MVPs that are going to market. We see a lot of asset tokenization and a lot of people talking about it. The Ernst & Young Blockchain Global Summit right now is all about asset tokenization. We have solid use cases and um, very good uh, solutions that are coming up. And more and more institutional money is going to come into crypto this year. So it's definitely the best time to actually look into this and invest further and develop your product. Just make sure that you have a good solid use case that uses blockchain, <laughs> does not just market it, and try to not oversell what you have. Try to over deliver, do not under promise, but over deliver what you want. Communicate with your team, have good community managers and have a legit software development team that can actually deliver your product. Because after all, at the end of the day, you are a CEO, a manager, and you want to have something real and legit. Thank you so much for your time. I hope that you enjoyed my presentation. <laughs> I will also be around today and tomorrow to uh, further talk about your projects if you want any kind of advice. Thank you so much.